smartly wore the short sleeve shirt down there, right, Chief? <laughs> Thinking ahead. Did you wear a short sleeve shirt? We can vaccinate you today. <laughs> <laughs> can you verify your first and last name and date of birth, please? J. Robert Kritzker, uh, 1965. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not broadcasting. <laughs> Don't need that. Janelle tells me she did 75 vaccinations yesterday and has done about 8,000 since the beginning of the pandemic. So thank you thank for you. your work. Don't, Don't worry, I'll be your best shot. <laughs> That's what I promise. <laughs> Should I start singing? <laughs> She said she can do it with her eyes closed. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you don't want to try that out? No. How did the governor get stabbed in the stand? <laughs> and you've done your left arm today, correct? Got it, yes. First to London, and then to Glasgow. Have you done it yet? I did. <laughs> She's very good. That's for Janelle. <laughs> I'm going to take a few questions. Yes. We have at least For 15 one. minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
already so many vaccines that are required for school. Uh, I think you know we are just looking to get the initial EUA, the uh, emergency use authorization. Hopefully, everything signed off by the CDC and the the director of the CDC, Dr. Walensky, this week. So I think it's premature to think about uh, requiring uh, those for school. We probably would want it to have the the standard authorization, the biologics license application, such as what we have for Pfizer for individuals who are 18 and over. So uh, no vaccine probably requirement at this time, but that's not probably for forever. That probably could change, you know, you know, much further down the line. So uh, nothing to report today on that. <laughs> and machinations, yeah. I would just say that we're making this decision really every day. Um, you know, we look at the numbers. I talk to the doctors at IDPH and especially Dr. Azike. Um, and what we're trying to evaluate is are the hospitalization numbers, for example, uh, increasing, decreasing, staying the same. We want them decreasing. They're not currently, just to be clear. New hospitalizations are flat. That is not a good sign. That's not what's happened in previous uh, dips from surges. Um, we, we went down for a while here, but now we've leveled out at a level that is much higher than the summer. And so the question is, is that just a temporary situation? Are we going to start heading downward in those numbers? So that's one thing. Um, and then the second, of course, is the, um, the number of vaccinations. You know, just watching, are we actually protecting uh, uh, people more and more? Are they getting their first shots? Are people getting vaccinated? And are boosters widespread, particularly among uh, older people? Because that's where we've seen breakthrough, uh, you know, uh, disease has uh, sometimes taken lives at a higher rate than in other age groups. And so we want to make sure that boosters are getting out there, especially to seniors in uh, long-term care facilities or in nursing homes. So this is all in the mix of consideration. Most importantly, of course, just overall, if hospitalizations are heading downward, if the number of people in the hospital with COVID-19 is heading downward, that's a really good sign and means that we're you know, getting more and more optimistic about uh, removing indoor mask mandates f outside of the schools. Well, first of all, um, the IDPH provided the information that was necessary about that hospital and the uh, vaccinations that were given by that hospital uh, as requested by the uh, authorities. And as far as I'm concerned, there should be a very thorough investigation. And if there was wrongdoing, we need to, you know, find those people out and they need to be held accountable. Thank you.